welcome to the wide world of esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Noor. Today, we're talking about Esports Circus, the ultimate collegiate mobile venue. With me is Esports Circus ringmaster, Jeff Stansfield. Hey, everybody, welcome. All welcome. Right. And I love your hat, that's great. Thank you. To my gold hat, it goes with my gold jacket and my tie and my sparkly gold shirt. Even my shoes are gold. You can't see them, but. Yeah, well, you know, you're definitely the ringmaster. So tell us what East, tell us about Esports Circus. Yeah, so Esports Circus came out of my love for the circus as a kid. I love the idea and the majesty of the circus. I remember as a kid going to the circus and seeing all the clowns and them and all the wonderful acts and stuff like that. And I know that in the late we've we've sent all the lions and elephants back to Africa where they can roam and be happy. And I said, and I've always loved that magic. I wanted to relaunch it and, and find some way to do it. And when I was building an, an esports arena in early uh, 2000, well, in 2019, I Looked at, I, I, I was, I, I came to me. I wanted to get involved in esports. I wanted to be more involved. I was already involved in the, the broadcasting end and building, building arenas and, and infrastructures and stuff like that. But I really wanted to be involved in it. And I've always been a showman all my life, you can, as you can tell. And so I just came to me one night and said, you know, build this esports circus and, and, and invite people to come on. So I, I wanted to do it. And I had, and I had that dream. And I made it happen. I made the dream happen. And we, we've been successful. We had some great success events in early 2020. And we're going to have some great events in later this year and in the next years and so on and so forth. Okay, well, let's show the video and see more about it. Absolutely. I'm Jeffrey Stansfield. I'm the ringmaster of Esports Circus. I'd like to invite you to come and run with the circus. The Esports Circus helps schools develop esports teams and host in-person events at the schools, allowing students to play on massive stages they might not get the opportunity to do. The problem in the industry is that most schools don't know how to develop teams, monetize teams, or recruit students and find career paths, among many other issues. For example, most schools build a land center when building out their esports area putting many computers on desks next to kids like they did in the 80s, this workflow is not flexible and opens the door to things like vandalism, theft, and uploading of dangerous stuff. The eSports Circus has a proven workflow that can secure and can move the system anywhere on campus in minutes. Schools usually are too far away from large stadiums, and the stadiums don't like to host collegiate events because it hasn't been as much profit as hosting professional events. We handle this issue by working with schools to develop programs to meet their needs and work with student clubs to bring their dreams alive of having an esports team on campus. We host events at schools, bringing the esports circus to the schools. We invite other schools from around the area in a massive circus environment. At the esports circus, the college and high school athletes can compete on stages and participate in other activities to help foster STEM creativity with esports, robotics, virtual reality, game design, production, and many other disciplines. The esports circus gives profits back to the schools to help them build their program. If a school hosts us on campus, they get 5% off the profits. We also have opportunities for hosting schools and participating schools to share in revenues with a 25% discount on ticket sales and a 50-50 sponsorship revenue split on all sponsorships they bring in. Even though we have recently launched, we have many years of experience behind us. I'm a broadcast engineer with over 30 years of experience building hundreds of TV stations all over the country. Other executives have over 10 decades of experience in marketing, branding, production, social media, and sports. This year, we actually received the prestigious STEM certification for outstanding achievement in our past and our revolutionary program for developing a full package of STEM activities for schools. If you have any questions about our program, please visit our website, esportscircus.com, and I will see you at the circus. So that's some 
press of death. And what I wonder about, okay, so I know, I know you're not bringing elephants and tigers and lions to the venue. I know that's not what you're bringing with you. What are you bringing with you when you travel with the eSports circus? Well, we have the big circus tent. Uh, so if you go to our website, eSportsCircus.com, you scroll down, you can see our circus tent. We have broadcast trailers. We're bringing in, of course, some clowns and some magic tricks and stuff like that. But we're bringing the majesty of the circus, keeping that magic that we all love alive. And but in filling it with esports and robotics, and we have a virtual reality carnival because you can't have a circus without a carnival, right? So we have got a virtual reality carnival. We have our robotics. We have our virtual our our, our esports games. And so that's the, that's what we bring in and replace with those lovely little animals that we all that we all love to see when we were kids. So do, are there competitions then, um, basically esports tournaments? Yes, absolutely. So we bring in, we, we usually have a set of games that we have, plus we find the games that are in the neighborhoods and the areas that we are developing. Like one thing we're doing is we're planning an Arizona trip. We're going to do eight Eight, eight, eight areas, eight setups in Arizona, or no, sorry, New Mexico. We're going, and we're going to do eight, eight events there. We're going to have Seattle. We're going to Valley Forge. We're going, uh, we'll be in uh, Daytona, Florida. We'll be in El Paso, Texas, so on and so forth. Uh, we're, Bellflower is one of probably going to be our, our closest event that we're doing, Bellflower, California. And we're just going to bring esports. We're going to bring it into the community, involve the community so we can help build the business of the community back we're going to involve the, and and really help the local economy grow help the kids expand into into the career opportunities that they want to have and you know help 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 everyone grow now is this targeted only for college or does it also um do you also go to high schools or or you know just the community well, yeah, all, all three. We're mostly collegiate esports tournament company, but we involve high school teams in what we do. We may have some high school tournaments, but mostly what we're doing with the high school kids is we want to have them come in and get internships with us, and so they can help, you know, be volunteers and run the organizations, and then be introduced to the to the high, to the colleges and maybe make some positive connections and grow that grow their their collegiate career. Are you able to do more than one vent at a time right now, or is it just one vent at a time because of like one tent and one operation? Well, eventually we're going to franchise this whole thing. Eventually, I want to franchise this and have multiple surfaces. Not only, not every, not like, not only eight or nine surfaces in the United States. I want to have surfaces in Canada, South America. We've already been talking to South America. We talked to Canada. We we went to Xi'an, China. Uh, we went to South Korea. We didn't go to North Korea, but and uh, uh, we talked to people in in Vietnam, uh, Thailand, India, and the UK, and other other like all over Europe. And so eventually, we're going to franchise this and have them all over the world. And so yeah, we could we could definitely have multiple teams running circuses. You know, because we're just really starting out, we we've been successful. We really want to start and doing one circus road at, the, at a time. And then as we branch out and build these up, we'll have multiple surfaces. And then of course we'll have franchise opportunities so other people can take advantage of this incredible opportunity and have their own circuits. Okay, so in Hawaii, we have, um, uh, there's a school where Obama graduated from uh, and that was Punahou. And yes. Punahou every February has a Punahou Carnival and that's one of their main fundraising activities. And I wonder if you could have an esports circus kind of in conjunction to existing carnivals. Yes, uh, one of the things that we're doing is we're going to be working with uh, in Daytona, Florida during the July 4th, next July 4th weekend. We're going to be in Daytona, Florida. The, the, we're, during the race track time, we'll be at the track. And so they're going to have that whole big festival that they have. And we're going to get one of those, air, we're going to get a giant hanger that they're giving us. And we're going to build the circus in that, and so we'll, you know, so we we can de we can definitely work within that. We also talked to a couple other cities that are having their uh, their, their uh, 
fair, their, their annual fair that they have. And we're going to be in conjunction with that. So they they want to bring esports into these fairground into these nat state fairs. And so we're gonna we're working with that as well. So yeah, we can definitely pop up. The great thing about this about our our platform is that we can pop up anywhere. I can pop up in a park. I can pop up in a, in a, in a, on, a on a lawn at a, at a college, college, a baseball field, football, any place we can pop in. The reason we like to set up at colleges so much is they have everything we need. In order for us to set up, we need a place to play, power, internet, security, and bathroom. And colleges have all that. They have campus security, they have internet, they have power. They have, we just have to route it to wherever we are. And we can do that. And then we work with them. We give them percentage of the profits. Like I, you saw the video, they can, and the college can make revenues for sponsorships and ticket sales and stuff like that. And they have a great amount of energetic students who, who you know, the alumni can sell to the alumni, they can sell it to the student unions and sell it through those. So there's a lot of opportunities for the students to really help work with us and partner with us. But we can, we go anywhere. Okay. And, you know, let's talk about uh, STEAM, okay? Yeah. What does it stand for and why, how is that relevant to what you do? Well, STEM, STEM, create, STEM education is a very important part of esports and the technology in esports. STEM stands for science, engineering, uh, uh, mathematics, arts. So it's actually arts and mathematics. <laughs> um, my dyslexia there. But so STEM is all part of that. If you're a game, you know, this, if, if you're a game player, you you know, one of the things that that separates some of the best teams is in you know analytics, data analytics of how how games play, science of engineering of all that data gameplay. If you're a game designer, you need to you know be able to create these great art things. One of the greatest things about we love about about games is the graphics and art behind them, and someone has to create that art. You know, and to design games, to do the programming games takes uh, uh, engineering and mathematical skills. And, you know, and uh, even in other parts of esports like robotics, with drone, drones and robot wars and all that, it's a very engineering and, and engineering, mathematics, and design field. And in VR, you have also all these disciplines. So art and engineering and mathematics, all these and science, all those levels of science is ingrained in, in, into what esports is everyone looks at the game and says oh that's great but they don't think about all the engineering and art and and development of sciences that goes into developing games and so that's and our program of how we've been helping students for the past 10 years in things like color science and data science led us to develop a really aggressive east you know stem program which is why we received last year the prestigious stem certification that we got so this is not just going to the circuit. This is actually a benefit for people to um, broaden their uh, horizons in STEM. Is that right? Absolutely. We want to teach people. We want the students. We go to a college. We don't just want the college to come and compete and play. We want to deal with the college engineering department and the and, and the product video production department, audio production departments, all the different departments at that school, whatever they have a discipline in, we want to involve them and have them work on at, at our at our event and become a part of it and build their build their career opportunities because there's a lot of opportunities for career opportunities in esports other than just playing games. And you know other things we stress is is you know diversity diversity is a big part of what we do. We want to train diversity and diversity initiatives are a big part of what we do. So you know, whatever you're into, as far as you're going to college to learn this, do this, we want to involve that in esports because it's all a part of what it is. Okay. And so there is a question for a, from a viewer, and that yeah. is, 20 years ago, your career wasn't even possible. What advice would you give people uh, to prepare for careers that don't exist yet? Well, Mike, the, the, the circus existed 20 years ago. Video production existed 20 years ago. Games existed 20 years ago. I played games when I was, <laughs> when I, before I was 20, you know, I, and I'm a little bit older than that. So, you know, all this existed. Esports in a, in a name didn't exist 20 years ago, but it, but it existed. And just because and you know, the esports we see today came out of traditional 
gaming technologies and, and all this. So, and just because you don't see this, you may not see this come to fruition right now, by understanding and developing what you're interested in. Don't worry about finding your career, what's gonna be in 20 years. Find out what you're passionate about today and excel in your passion. Because if you excel in your passion, your passion will become the next great thing in 20 years from now. Sure, and I, you know, I think a lot of people who are fairly new to esports, they don't really know the history. It does, uh, competitive video gaming goes back to 1972 with the first competition. And there were games that were developed in the early 1940s. So it is a really Absolutely. longer, it has a longer history than a lot of people are really aware of. But during the pandemic, we, you know, we've certainly learned a lot more about it because the focus has been less on traditional sports and more on esports. So what has happened during the pandemic for you? Well, you know, we, okay, so in January, we held the first great event that we had. And it was a fun event uh, at, the, at the North American, this right here, there's our, 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 the, this is at the North American Music Merchant Show. This is a show for music stores like Guitar Center and Sam Ash to see what the new technologies are. And they've been getting hit by their members to do something in esports. And we've been going to NAMM for 20 years. So we told them we would do this. And we set up a gigantic booth at this thing. We had 10 PC gaming consoles, four VR consoles, a VR experience chair, a broadcasting area. We had all this stuff. We had over a thousand people sign up and play tournaments at our event. We had 10 times more that come by and look at what we're doing and, and, and experience what it is. And the stores were really excited about it because they were looking for ways to bring people back into the retail stores instead of going to that uh, startup called Amazon or Walmart just online thing that people can go into when they want to get people back to retail stores. Well, if you have a esports or virtual reality area in your music store, draws people back into there, and then you can sell them a, a Shure headset or a Shure, or a Blue mic or a, a HyperX, you know, HyperX mic or something like that, that they already, they already signed up for these lines and then it would just in, increase their sales. So, but I digress. <laughs> so we held this event in January. We did also another event in February. And then we got shut down with our events. We had five more events scheduled in last year. We got shut down because of the pandemic. But like all good uh, entrepreneurs and business people, we did this thing called pivot that you, every business does. You pivot. And so we pivoted and turned our attention to really defining what we we're doing and then also working with schools to help them develop their team, which was always the second part of what we really wanted to do. We're big infrastructure people. We work with schools to help build their infrastructures in ways that most of them don't do. Like I said in the video, building a land center is putting a computer on a desk next to a kid is a dangerous thing. We have ways that are much better workflows, much inexpensive workflows, much more powerful workflows that allow you to take control of your of your esports arena area. And you know, so and then we all with marketing and branding, because these teams are build this thing and then they don't know how to monetize their team. They don't know how to brand and market their team. And so we have experts that are, that are experts in branding and marketing. Uh, we, one, of, one of our partners is Don Montoya, who's an angel investor. He's exited many companies and got companies to IPO. So he knows how to, how to take a brand and make that brand profitable. So we helping develop, and we worked on that all last year and building our, and building our personal brand. And so now we're coming out of this new year and we're just getting hit by all these companies and all these cities and all these schools are saying, we want eSports Circus here. And so we're going to bring them. Wow, that's really exciting. So is there an element of giving back in your company? Absolutely. The first, I mean, we give back in a lot of ways. First of all, we give back because we train people how to do the jobs that they may not understand in esports, like production, audio production, video production, broadcasting, uh, event management, uh, mark, you know, running our, our our event store, running you know, running helping run operations, and also helping them actually, you know, do thing do other things in in, in that aspect. And you know, we're running out of diversity initiatives, and then learning about STEM, learning how STEM is really a part of this whole thing, and 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 our partners. We have partners that can that train and, and help schools do 
much more than they than they than they're doing now. So we're able to do that. Plus, we have the financial give back where students can actually make money coming to our event by bringing us. You know, if you go down to the local Starbucks subway or GameStop and you're in, next to your school, say, "Hey, sponsor the esports circus. But do a banner for two thousand dollars. The banner costs us nineteen hundred dollars." We split that. You make you get your half. I get my half. We're all happy, and you want my, and then ticket sales. Sell tickets to your friends and family, and you make a twenty percent register on ticket. That's you know. So we give back that way. I'm always a big guy. But for the last you know twenty years, I've worked with the I worked with American Red Cross. In fact, I just go. I have my pins here for my COVID uh, relief pins. I got my my COVID pin here. I got my uh, 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 silver. President's pin here that I just got yesterday. I got these yesterday for doing that. I've been a I've been a part of the big big brother, big sisters for many years, uh, uh, volunteering and mentoring over five young men to to manhood. So we're our company is set up on the give back. Possibly it's you know uh, Ellen, one of my heroes, Eleanor Roosevelt, once said, "When you cease to make a contribution, you begin to die. When you cease to make a contribution." You begin to die. Think about those words. And those words have resonated in my life. And I always look at everything I do, give back. And whoever you are, whatever you do, the first thing you need to th what, what, first thing you think in business is how can I make my fellow person better? And that's what we do. Fantastic. So um, do you work with the schools uh, before and after the event? Yes, we do. When we are planning a school, we'll work with the school to, to, to work with them and figure out the best way to showcase their school. One of the schools we're working with, they want us to spread the esports circus throughout their whole campus, put you know, games in each of their, in, in each of their uh, big, uh, big buildings so that we can, the kids can come in and see the, the School of Engineering, see the School of Arts and stuff like that. So we work with them to help develop and showcase the school in the best light we can when we're and then when we leave we, we work with the school to help make sure that when we leave we bring a more positive and better environment than just just you know we, we leave more than just popcorn and and, and wagon tracks <laughs> it's an old circus term but yeah so we do that and then we work with them to help build their teams in our esports builder program sure okay so we have a few more pictures. I want, I'd like to show them so that you can tell us about these particular events. Sure. Well, this was again at the NAM event. This is some of the people who won prizes. One of the uh, sponsors was HyperX, who gave us a bunch of headsets and some other, and some keyboards and stuff like that. We, we gave those out as prizes. We also gave a prize uh, called Esports e EDU, which was a, a friend of mine who published a book called Esports EDU that you can get on Amazon. It's a great book. We gave copies of that away. And we gave tons of prizes. And these were some of the some of the winners. Uh, these are the winners of the Fortnite uh, competition we did. So this was these were the people who were the who were the, the three winners of the Fortnite. So this was one of this is our virtual this is one of our virtuality games. So these consoles people would walk up, the headset would 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 come down from this from the little, little holder it had in the ceiling, they would grab the hand the handles and they could pick between four different games. There was uh, a, a game for little kids. There was a, a space shoot em up game. There was a skiing game where you ski down a hill. And uh, there was a, another game that was a um, golf game. We had a golf, no, it wasn't a golf game. Uh, I forget what the fourth game was, but there was four games to choose from. And, you know, then we had competitions, who was the best, and we read it, and we had a bunch of people sign up to play, and we gave prizes there as well. Sure. Um, do you ever have people dress up when they attend the circus? I could see. Oh, cosplay. Cosplay is a huge part of what we're doing, and it's always been a huge part of every esports event. You have to have a cosplay. In fact, one of the things that we're going to be doing is and we did, and this, this is the first time that we we're announcing it actually on your show uh is that we're going to be doing a tv show based on project runaway remember the old Ooh. project runaway show that was very popular but we're going to be doing cost play runaway which is going to be uh, a show that we're going to have a huge cash prize and we're going to develop the best cosplay art uh designers in in the united states so we're going to do a huge big national event it's going to go that, that we're going to have big auditions for and people are going to join us because cosplay is all about it. I, 
I I dressed up all the time. <laughs> no no surprise. I dressed up all the time. And I was at the I was at the Dream Hack event. I dressed up. I had this I had this uh, really cool uh, outfit I made from uh, from Diablo Two, which was one of my early favorite games that I played a lot. Uh, and so I dressed up as a big demon from that game. But yeah, cosplay is a very big part of what we're all about. And like. Like they say in Project Runway, make it work, right? That's it. That's it. Make it work. Yeah, I love that show. And I, I could see that being a really exciting thing. So what do you think the future of esports is? Well, the future is, is you know, I mean, we esports, you know, matter, even though we're just starting out, really, we're just starting out in esports. You know, there's a, it's going to, this whole industry is going to pivot many times. I think that some of the, you know, new advancements with the new glasses that are Google and Apple glasses that are coming out are going to be a very big part of what esports and I think more virtual reality and augmented reality are going to be a big part of what the future of esports are. Because, you know, VR today, big heavy glasses, no one likes them. You know, even the people, even Oculus doesn't like the glasses. So eventually we'll change out of those glasses into something else like the Google Glasses and Apple Glasses that's, that, that they're developing now. Um, and so that, I think, is, is the next big thing. Robotics and how, how robotics has become more important in esports, I think, is already, already we see huge advancements in drone racing and, you know, and, and, and car race, you know, controlled car racing and stuff like that. But I think robotics is also going to be a big change to how it is. Uh, you know, and that, so there's going to be a lot of that coming in. And I think the broadcasting is going to get better. People are going to, are going, I, you know, there's a lot of people out there. There's 30, 39 million uh, Twitch channels. There's uh, 912 uh, YouTube channels devoted to gaming. Not necessarily just esports, but gaming entirely. I think that, that there's a lot of people involved in it. I think that the whole industry because most of the people who are producing content for all these is producing low quality content that is okay for YouTube and Twitch, but not okay for broadcasting. So I think that, that some of the people who are doing that are going to come around and develop really high, high quality broadcast shows that can, be net, that can be seen on the networks and stuff like that. So I think those are the, those are the, the, the areas that I see advancement in. Sure. And I, you know, I uh, early, later in the year of 2020, I did did interview uh, some uh, Hollywood agents who talked about their upcoming show. But uh, we're almost out of time, so Jeff, I'm going to ask you to tell us how people can uh, find out more about Esports Circus and to contact you. Yeah, I mean, we're everywhere on online. If you go to esportscircus.com, if you go to LinkedIn or Twitter or Facebook. You can go to Esports Circus and we're, you know, Facebook.esports /es Circus. Uh, we have a YouTube channel, of course. And so we have all that. You, you, but our best thing is the website. We have a website. If you want to look at the things we do for schools, we have a tab, what we do for schools. And you can click on that. And there's a first thing is a link to our team builder website, which is a separate website that goes over all the things, how we, how we work with schools. And so you can see, you can see that. So the, our website is, uh, is the best. And then you can always email me at jeff at esportscircus.com. That's jeff at esportscircus.com. Or you can call us 800-287-5095. That's 800-287-5095. My personal extension is 105. So. <laughs> Fantastic, Jeff. Well, thank you for being my guest today. I learned a lot. Well, I'm happy to have be on your show. It's exciting. I, I was so excited when you invited me, and, and, I'm, and I'm really excited to be here. Fantastic. All right. So uh, thank you to the viewer who sent in the question, and thank you for joining us today. Next week, my guest will be Sky Kaveloa to talk about college esports in North America. See you then.